uh, making St. Martin to be breast aware for October 2019. We have a number of screening opportunities that are available, um, and we're encouraging everyone to come out and take advantage of these opportunities. On the 9th of October, as well as on the 11th, 12th, and the 16th of October, we have screening opportunities at the Zamora Paris Medical Clinic on the 9th, at the St. Martin Diagnostic Center also on the 9th, at the Simpson Bay Medical Clinic on October 11th, at Dr. Spencer on October 12th, the Family Medical Practice on October 12th, the St. Martin Diagnostic Center again on October 16th. We have the Swaliga Medical Practice, which is in Kobe, on the 17th of October, and the Pure Health Clinic on the 17th of October as well. Both these clinics are in full Bay. The Simpson Bay Clinic is on October 18th, and we're doing a breast abnormality survey project on October 19th. For this particular event, the breast abnormality survey, you're required to call to make an appointment. Please check our Facebook site for the information on the scheduled date where you can get a free clinical breast examination. We want St. Martin to be breast aware. We want them to feel it, find it, and find it. Other items on our calendar events for October include the happiness event, which is scheduled for the 10th of October at the St. Martin Cultural Center from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. It's a totally free event, and we'll definitely show you how to get happy for the rest of the year. So come on out to the happiness event. On the 19th of October, we have the Coyman Team to Pink event, and that is from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. Be sure to go to the Coyman website to register for this event. And as I mentioned before, we have the Breast Abnormality Research Project, which happens at the Vineyard Building on October 19th. And you are required to go and uh, make an appointment for this event because it not only is a breast screening opportunity, you get a full workup, including getting your weight and blood pressure checked. Um, and of course, the results from this survey will form part of the statistics that we're collecting for our breast abnormality project in conjunction with AC and of course, CPS. On October 20th, we have a Bikers for Boobs Rally starts at the Caribbean Eagles Club from 4 o'clock in the afternoon. On the 26th of October, we have the Breast Abnormality uh, Project again. And again, I'm encouraging you to go to our website and call to make an appointment for this research project. On the 27th of October, we are having a wrap-up with the uh, Methodist Church and a Thanksgiving service. And everyone is invited to come on out at 5 p.m. And this will be a Thanksgiving uh, service at the Methodist Church, Phillipsburg. Pandora's Party for Pink happens on November 1st. From 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Pandora on Front Street. And again, on the 16th of October, we have our Breast Abnormality Research Project. St. Martin, be breast aware, feel it find it and fight it. has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. 
We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. You deserve it, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Sing it, everyone. Sing it. Let me hear you from the bottom of my heart. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs. So welcome to the Nagical Health and F Fitness Fair. This is the second edition of our Nagical Health and Fitness Fair and you're here live with us. As you can see, this is Miss Kira Ali sporting one of our Nagical shirts. As, as this is our mantra for this year, we want to remind people our roots run deep in the Caribbean, 21 territories and counting. So today at the Nagical Fitness Fair, first of all, Miss Kira Ali, Chief Strategy Development Officer. Did I get that right? You did indeed. Checkpoint. All right, so my name is Elisa Brown, the marketing manager for Nagical, and today at the Health and Fitness Fair, as I mentioned, it's our second edition, and we wanted to bring health professionals as well as fitness providers all in one spot at a convenience for everybody in one location. We've been having a great turnout since morning. Our first fitness class started at 6 30, which was yoga, and it was huge. Huge. Very good. Yes, we even had the Prime Minister here this morning. She joined us in and we appreciate that. But for now, we have a lot of testing going on. As you can see, we have the HIV AIDS doing rapid testing. We have the Positive Foundation who is giving out information about breast cancer and prostate cancer. We have Red Cross who will be doing uh, demos of first aid, how you can apply first aid in the situation if it requires it. We do have the government bus, which is actively giving out vaccination to kids 0 to 17 years old. We have the dental bus, which is doing dental checkup, eye vision, air. We have diabetes, glucose, cholesterol, and pressure testing. We do have um, Arena Base, which is providing um, healthy alternatives for people here in terms of meal option. We have Arts Craft Cafe. So you're probably wondering why do we have painters here? Now painting is one way to relieve stress. It's very therapeutic and today she'll be given administrating three classes. Everything here is free of cost. So just show up, come on down to Nagical Health and Fitness Fair and be part of it. One of our newest addition this year, Kira probably you want to tell him a little bit about the Taekwondo. Indeed. So we have Taekwondo this year. You will see Mr. Lu, Master Lu and his team of all the youths and also adults that go out every year and compete for St. Martin. But now they're here today to show us and give us a little bit of a demonstration. If you think about Taekwondo, sometimes you think, oh, that's karate. No, it's not. It's a martial art, but it helps you with discipline, relaxation, stress relief. And Najiko's Health and Fitness Fair this year goes beyond just physical checkups and just normal exercise classes. It's about wellness, mental wellness. And the art and Taekwondo was specifically created or introduced in this year for that purpose. We relax without even knowing we're relaxing, we're unwinding. These are very, 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 very nice things and we can continue. It's a pleasure, but it also relaxes us. So look out for it. The first class is at 11 o'clock. Come on down and I have a special, um, let's say, look out for 11 o'clock. There's a special thing to see.
the admission department is basically where we hold clients that need help with themselves, as in, in a crisis or non-crisis. A crisis situation could be a loved one or any one of the family member can call us saying, hey, the person that acting in such a way, we need help. If the person is being admitted, they will be incarcerated by the police, yes. From there, you'll be admitted to the crisis room. The crisis room now will give you an uh, independent stay by yourself with the guidance of our nurses. And how was the process for you of being admitted here? How was that experience? It was good. They talked to me polite. They never cursed me off because I was smoking marijuana. I used to be addicted to that thing. Mm -hmm. It made me it motivate me. Yeah. They gave me my freedom to look for my jobs and stuff like that. When we find or the doctor finds that you're stable enough, then we move you down to our admission ward where you'll be among other clients and to mingle with the nurses even more. To, that's where we say we regain back piece by piece, we bring it back to the reality of what you gotta deal with to see if you will handle the pressure that comes with everyday living. And also, I'm going to school. Oh, school? Yeah. All right, cool. Not only job, it's also school. So I used to smoking my one and I stopped drinking alcohol. This has been years I haven't touched that. Impressive. Very strong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pin code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick-login. We will inform all our affiliated organizations and the members of those organizations about how the same MPs that have been criticizing the former <coughs> coalition and have been pointing fingers that a lot of things were not done on behalf of the people. That now that they have to address issues for the people, that they do not address it. The formateur got some opportunity to discuss it with the coalition partners for them to get a governing accord. If it is not in the governing accord, it means that they don't take it serious, they don't want to have it as a priority, and so the whole, um, I, I would all, almost say drama, <laughs> that has occurred in Parliament, where they were criticizing the other government, right? They were fake, because if they were really for the people, <clears throat> it will be priority number one in this governing program. It was not in the former governing program as a priority. We have showed you already, it's only a little paragraph, eradication of poverty with the heading, and that only to determine a study in four year times, or what is the poverty line. Then you didn't help us yet. But this time, all those MPs that have been criticizing and found themselves right now in a new majority coalition, put the money where the mouth is. This has to be priority number one apart from what the governor told them that should be in the uh, governing accord, in this period that they will be governing, we think that this is, and this should be, priority number one. Unions, our demand, it is not only um, in the anti-poverty platform, but our demand should be that any governor, or a government that wants to take charge now, social dialogue <laughs> with the social partners is a must. The, the points that would then benefit the workers that are being put forward must be in the governing accord because there are a number of points and situations that we have been uh, championing for years based on ILO conventions. For example, decent work, 
when can we <clears throat> fairly say that decent work is something um, that, that would give a worker a six months contract? And then the argument, which is not true, that St. Martin is a seasonal, coming from the business platform, seasonal. St. Martin has business 12 months all year round, 24 seven. Um, basically, that should become, that's a, 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 a fairy tale that is being told to keep the workers in poverty and to keep them on this six months contract. That is something that we have to eradicate, and therefore, social dialogue <coughs> have to get the forefront in any deliberations right now. So it is not only about um, what we need we need for the poor and needy households, but it is also what we need for the workers in this country that build this country. That is what, as unions, we have decided now. We are not a political party, <coughs> but this, we have to make sure that we have this incorporated in any government program going forward. So the rights of the workers has to be respected based on all ILO conventions that were ratified by the kingdom and by the country of St. Martin. And so we would like to, whatever the prime minister, what is your question or her observation on, on the question, is then, if it's not so many, how many? Because it is now the burden of proof sits with her. Because the survey, the, the survey that was done was not done by us. We don't own a drone. You understand? So the Dutch government who own a drone and who have gone into uh, in the media, international media, announcing the amount of home that has been um, damaged and how they've been damaged. So they didn't say it was homes that been damaged and Structure. structural damages and category one or whatever. They defined it. So if you want to come and bring now an update on this matter, then you have to bring a correct update. One that is it's proven statistically, that means based on, on, on work done and that has been surveyed. So bring the report until then, whatever the Prime Minister gives, without, especially without um, numbers, okay? Be because even if you bring numbers, you need to bring the facts to the table. This amount was has been repaired. So we're going to stick to the report of what was published. <coughs> we believe it was a credible report done by the Dutch military, okay? In which the Dutch government has put its back in behind. And until then, and the last person on this island here has proper housing, and is living also in a resilient home, then that stands on the table. So, and we, we should also get away from the matter of if that wasn't the amount or not, until the last person has proper roofing, that's when we're gonna stop this discussion here. It's not true, the figures is not true, should be, that should be the order of the day <laughs> of the prime minister. The prime minister, the people deserve the rights to know. So <coughs> her um, presentation should be more factual. This was the amount of housing that we have recorded as damage. These were the amounts that were repaired in year one with where did they get the funding from it should also be clear because we are aware of a number of organizations that are providing people with help whether it is just the material like the red cross or whichever or some art and purse or even volunteers that came into the island after the hurricane and did things we need to have this um these facts presented to the population in our very, um, how you say, open and also a comfortable manner. And to come and say, <coughs> of the, you know, to bring in stride and to don't strive, oh, the anti-poverty platform is saying this and it is not like this, then you bring as prime minister your duty of what has happened and how many. And despite no matter how many repairs have been done, we still, as anti-poverty platform, we are demanding affordable social housing. We have, we have recorded a number of seniors prior to the hurricane that already had homes that were structurally damaged and needed repair, and it was not affordable to them. We have 
also a number of citizens <coughs> because of the lack of, um, let's say, housing and affordable housing. They cannot continue to develop their family and have their own house. If I look, for example, in um, a, a place like Curacao, where we were in, in things together, and we would see the amount of social housing, affordable social housing, that is being prepared there by Fundación Cas Popular, whereas they don't actually suffer these type of categories, then our our politicians should be shamed. If we just look at the report of Dominica that have suffered a category <coughs> um, a hurricane like St. Martin and the amount of houses that they, social homes that they were able to deliver in two years time, then if I was the Prime Minister, I would shut up and get the facts to make my cabinet and my island look good. What's up, St. Martin? My name is Rene Leverett and I play baseball. And I've represented St. Martin in numerous international tournaments and professionally around the world. Sports matters to me because it reveals and develops character. So I challenge the business community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facilities. I also ask the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take the challenge and step up for sports. Because hashtag sports matters, hashtag are you in. The foundation, the Pontefract Village Foundation, have decided to give the veterans a treat. A treat in coming out and displaying their God gifted talent that they have been carrying for over years. So, since they have gone into the, in the arena of being a veteran, we decided to host a, bet, a veteran basketball tree and tree knockout, especially for them. Our basketball knockout is going to be on the 13th of November at the LB Sport, Scott Sport Auditorium. And here are the rules. The rules are, it's going to be six players per team. Four, at least four, needs to be over the age of 50, showing a proven ID card. And with that, they're allowed to have two players between the age of 45 to 49. Guys, all passport or ID identification are requested. In order to prove that you are the right, or you are at the right age to play that game, okay? There will be a trophy for the first place and the second place winner. Not forgetting a stock bar, stock kitchen, because like I say, this this tournament is going towards help a child project, our Pontefract Village Foundation project. So over the years we've been hosting it for primary school. So this this year we decide to just bring in the veteran to see what he can do, give them some fun time to meet and greet each other and have fun together in remembrance of how it used to be back in the days playing basketball, having fun competing and having the best man to win or the best team to win. Every, every game has a certain amount of time. I think it's 12 or 15 minutes a game, running time. Okay, they will be playing half court. So I believe they will have enough condition to carry out the whole game. <laughs> Even though they get tired, they can stop, 
you know, and it's not running a whole court. So it's a whole complete different between running a whole court and playing half court. So it'll be fun for them. Okay, this is my normally rugby basketball program I have every Saturday that has been going on for the last 17 years at the school. I must say thanks to the school that allowed me to use the court for all these years. I'm very grateful and thankful to all the principal who have who have worked under and still continue to work under and give me that privilege to be here on the court, seeing the importance of basketball. But nevertheless, these kids here are here training and right now they have got an invitation to be part of an inter-island basketball tournament which will take place on November 1st, 2nd and 3rd. This tournament is being hosted by the Phoenix by the uh, Phoenix Association, a Phoenix Foundation from the French side. So we got an invitation to be part. Here we have the under-17 team is practicing. If you came a little early, you would have met the under-13. So these boys are practicing hard because they want to bring the championship to the Dutch side. We are for the Dutch side. So we're going to come out here and represent. And in order to represent, you got to train. Because I believe practice brings perfect. And teamwork makes the dream work. So we, we, are, we, we are getting ready.